If you haven't heard, I recently launched a Patreon with six different tiers of support, including gameplay analysis, video commissions, and coaching. So please go check it out. Also, don't forget to use the code PLUGIN at unfunstuff.com to save 5% off your order. And if you've got new players signing up for the UGN, my referral code is ACE. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. All these are great ways to help support the channel. And I really appreciate it. Every little bit really does help when it comes to the YouTube game. So thank you very much for your support. And thank you to my patrons for making this video possible. Enjoy the video, guys. Maneuver. Hey there, everybody. Ace Detective Gumshoe Maneuvers is here, and have I got the scoop for you. Now, a lot of people have been anticipating, they've been waiting, they've actually been begging for a ban list for some sort of change to our, let's just call it an aggressive format. Um, the deck, you know, the, the talk of the town on everyone's mind is Ojiro 2, but... A lot of content creators have uh, talked about the fact that there needs to be more than just an Ojiro touch if we really want to see some some real diversity hit the format. You know, if we want to see some some newer decks be entered into the fold rather than just having a decent mix, because I do think that we have a decent mix of decks. So, you know, if you're watching a lot of card games out there, you know the the diversity between starting characters and and symbols is pretty good compared to most standard formats and of course that's relative to the time at which you're watching this video but i digress when it comes to the ojiro problem in this format's issues i think that they've collected a lot of data and there's two main things number one is to make sure that they hit the appropriate amount of cards without going overboard right that not only do they not want to straight up ban characters, but when they do an errata, I don't think they want to do a Kirishima 1 level errata again. I think the Kirishima 2 errata is pretty fine. He he fits a kind of a specific niche role now rather than just being the most valuable character. So I think they're evaluating a lot of cards that have been played in more than just Ojiro while also trying to tackle the Ojiro issue that has cropped up of recently. Now again... I did my tier list. I put Ojiro in the second tier. I had three characters above him, and that was with the understanding that there would be a wider field of characters. You know, there's still 50% of our field is just, I'm not going to say completely random, but, you know, like characters that are registered at like one to two to three people playing them, right? So even at the first regional that people could sign up for, people were not just all going to Ojiro 2 if it was the vast majority. So they want to hit a lot of different stuff. That is an exponential problem, right? That is an exponential uh, issue that needs exponential solutions. Once you start kind of connecting the dots, it's easy to get lost in the sauce and lose sight of where we wanted our format to end up in the first place. So I I do think that it... it <laughs> I do think it's, it should have been like a more known issue, right? Like earlier than it was. But as far as collecting the data, we've not had a lot of events over a specific amount of time. So while you may have been practicing for this upcoming format, you know, I played a ton of stuff on TTS before it comes out, right? As soon as we get those images revealed to us, a lot of us, you know, who are really invested in the game are going to put that stuff up on TTS, test it digitally, uh, I've printed out plenty of proxies for upcoming sets when I know I'm going to be going to a Pro Tour Circuit event back in the UFS days before. <laughs> I still actually have some proxies printed out in the drawer um, that I found the other day, so big nostalgia hit for me there. Uh, for anyone wondering, it was uh, Kevin Broberg's Bring Your Friends uh, promo. So I have a, a paper with like four of those. Print. Anyway, that's I don't know why that made this video. However... Uh, the second part of the issue is one that we've heard a lot. And again, combined with the fact that while there may have been a lot of actual time, there's only been a small number of events to really collect the data from in combination with making informed choices. Um, we also have new cards coming out on the horizon. So I don't think they thought that the DLC was necessarily going to up anything with the aggressive format none of those characters are 
uh, particularly defensive. None of those cards are particularly <laughs> defensive. In fact, uh, the one that has Kirishima's face on it and the one that goes into Ojiro, it looks like the best one in my opinion, and that is Kirishima's assistance, right? So that's probably going to be the most meta one, and it <laughs> and it makes Ojiro even stronger. So I don't think the DLC was quite what they were thinking of when it came to maybe letting some more cards get into the fold. Uh, however, there is a another product on the way, and that is the Class Reunion Box. Now, the Class Reunion Box, of course, has mechanically unique promos that are definitely going to shake up the format in one way or another. And... While they're not, you know, there's nothing that is, I'm not saying anything is like blatantly overpowered coming out of it, or there's not going to be like one card, I think, that that warps the format and everyone's going to be just trying to jam it into everything and, and break it or, or you know, I don't think there's going to be any tongue whip level cards that become an entire symbol's identity. However, there is some cards that I think they'd want to see, or maybe, you know, design and playtest have had access to introducing these cards to the Ojiro matchup, and maybe they like the interactions, maybe they like the, you know, maybe they're getting to turn three is basically what I'm getting at. So I've got some cards here for you. I've got this little presentation that I think we're going to see at least uh, a little bit of public play, maybe exactly one event at the bare minimum with the class reunion cards before we get a ban list because none of these are strictly a silver bullet, but they do add some very interesting interactions. So uh, first up, I have for you guys, Create Insulation Cloth. So Create Insulation Cloth is a plus one mid block, which is super important because... You're not really going to be blocking with uh, with a plus two block against Ojiro very often. And realistically, you have to block the, the first one, right? You have to block the first attack. Oftentimes, the first attack is Karate Chop or Back Alley Haymaker. And yeah, they're going to stun you, commit you to on the first attack pretty much every single time. Um, once you do block with this card, and hopefully you haven't tapped out yet, um, which, I mean, that does happen a lot, too, on turn two, right? Where you, you tap completely out to block, like, a, a six mid to eight mid attack, you know? It, and, I mean, this is um, assuming that it's, like, no snack time, right? Because they would have already, like, gun threed you. So, 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 so anyway, you, you use your release, you use your rescue completed, and uh, your, your, um, your, precious, your precious lesson. So then we have... Uh, we have four foundations up, right? When we when we block with this, we will we'll have like at least like two to four foundations up. And then what what it says is response card pool flip after your rival plays a non character ability that commits or seals a card in your stage, cancel it. So the second time that they play Karate Chop, right? So we blocked the six mid version of it. Um, hopefully, and. The second time when they go to play Karate Chop and it's going to stun you for three instead, we, we can flip this in our card pool to cancel that. And then we'll be able to reduce the speed and, and probably block again. And then on top of that, this is made for Momo, right? Which we, we really like um, the defensive decks like Momo. So, so hopefully Momo 1 can come back and use this card with the first enhance, add one foundation to your card pool. Your next weapon attack gets plus two speed and plus two damage. So I know what you're thinking now. This does seem like maybe only Momo can use this, but this does have two symbols with Rising Starlet. Yeah, we got Rising Starlet. Um, and then you could play Mina 2 and add a face down your card pool oh and uh, all might's mentorship which is you know one of the new dlc cards so basically what i'm saying is like like i said there's no there's no silver bullets but i really think that once this card is in the format you'll be able to block two attacks from ojiro instead of just one and also your slower more defensive characters which are the only ones who can block ojiro twice anyways you know they get a lot of 
stats from this four diff. So if you're playing Momo one, you you probably can survive to turn three, and that's really the goal. Um, next up, this one this one is much better though. This one this one's gonna handle a lot more. So uh, first up. Big improvement, no Ojiro symbols. I didn't want to mention it in the last slide that Ojiro can also um, play the last card on two symbols. But but this card, this card has no Ojiro symbols. And so when you play the future is now, right, what's the big issue with, with Ojiro's? They play their whole hand at you, and then they say you can't deal 28, and you especially can't deal 28 through... They're stupid learning the standards. Well, now we have the perfect action card to play when they use learning the standards on us. So now, right, if this has this has exactly passing the torch symbols. So it's clearly meant to, you know, play an attack and you hit them for a bunch of damage and then they use learning the standards. Then you play the futures now. You play out all your foundations. Hopefully you build like two passing the torch. Maybe you have like new training method, right? These are like the cheese symbols. And then you play a really big attack. So like uh, the, the characters who probably would do this the best are uh, Jiro One, who would be a fresh and inviting new character into our format. And then there'd also be Denki. A lot of people have talked about Denki One. And, you know, it'd be cool to see Denki One win something um, for, for the first for, oh no, for the I think third time. Yeah. So it'd be cool to see new characters like Jiro One and Denki enter the format with powerful options to overcome learning the standards. You know, th this is really gonna change the way that Ojiro's play the game, right? They're not gonna be able to rely on playing every single foundation that they can and then just telling you to deal 28. This is gonna make it super, super easy to deal 28 now. Um, especially if you're playing a character that adds, you know, like a damage for cards in your card pool, right? So uh, this would be really cool if it had a Mina 2 symbol. Uh, as far as also beating learning the standards, we have one for all, 1 million percent Delaware Detroit Smash, the iconic, the iconic moment from the League of Villains story arc, right? This is like the... The crowning achievement for Midoriya. He goes a million percent. And this is also the first seven difficulty attack our game has seen, right? For the My Hero Academia format. So this card is insane, guys. It starts out at eight damage. That's already like a fourth of Ojiro's life. And then it says, enhance, discard your hand. This attack gains powerful X. X equals your momentum plus one. But you can't play attacks for the rest of the turn. So when your Ojiro opponent, right, wants to play out their whole hand and not block anything, um, on turn two, if you have, uh, so if it's three, that's powerful four, that's not enough. So if, if you have four momentum, it's powerful five, that's one. So if you have four momentum, if you have four momentum and they have no cards in hand and they have no damage reduction, then you can just deal 28 damage to them and learning the standards won't matter. So all you have to do, and if you're Midoriya, it gets stunned too anyways, right? So even if they like try to block, you can discard with one with nature. Uh, you can use snack time. You can use, um, uh, what else was in the Ojiro 2 deck? Uh, oh, you can use Chivalrous. To draw cards to after you discard your hand right so you can you can do all kinds of really cool stuff with this card um mostly just a lot of damage but but there's a lot of cool cards that give you momentum um this will be a really great finisher for for dinky one because he gets that momentum on turn two and then then there's um uh, oh, Mount Lady. Mount Lady also gets momentum. Yeah, so I'm really excited for this one. I think this one's going to do a great job of punishing those Ojiros who don't hold any tight lips in their hand. For all the Ojiros that don't have any speed resets, none of them are running You're So Obvious, right? It's a complete failure on their part. They're not playing any defense. 
you threaten to one shot them with one for all. I mean, it's in the name, right? One shot, one for all, one million percent Delaware Detroit Smash. This is definitely going to change the format, and there's no way an OG row would bother playing a seven difficulty attack. So they can't use this one, even though it has a symbol. Next up, speaking of momentum shenanigans, hey, where's my momentum users out there? I think these are like some of Levi 2 symbols. Um, so I know Levi is going to be excited for this because one, it has evil, and that's his name. And two, it does a momentum thing, and he's a momentum thing guy. So this card cannot be discarded from your momentum to pay costs, but there's a lot of remove from momentum to pay cost stuff that you, uh, you might be using. So don't forget... You can remove it to pay for a cost. However, uh, what this does, what masterminding does, is it says after your rival fails a check, add this card to your momentum face up. So once it's in your momentum, you can enhance once per turn your rival's next check gets minus one. Failing that check does not end the combat phase. So every time you get one of these, it's going to be a lot easier to make your opponent fail a check to get another one of these into your momentum. So you're really going to want four of this card, right? If you if you really want to be playing this strategy, you're going to have to go out and get four of this card because it is so good once you have a bunch of these together. And then once you have four of this card from the class reunion box, uh, you can give check hacks to all of Ojiro's checks. So if he's not going to be, you know, building a bunch of extra foundations, while he's attacking you, he's not going to be able to pass all of his checks. And then you can combine that with these symbols, amazing ability to commit your foundations on defense already. And then Ojiro just can't pass all the checks, right? So this card is going to be absolutely amazing. Uh, every Ojiro wants to build like six foundations on turn one. So, you know, you'll probably have to choose to go second, right? Because then they'll be able to like just commit their character and they play a bunch of zeros. But if you, if you choose to go second, especially if you're Shigaraki 3, you just you win the dice roll and you choose to go second and then you make them fail a foundation and you get masterminding. And then from then on, like once per turn, you can basically make them commit another foundation to play their attack. And then you'll definitely be able to survive until turn 3. And from there, you can get more mastermindings into your momentum and check hack more often and... You know, Ojiro will have to play, like, uh, uh, two other foundations for every masterminding you get. So, once you have four mastermindings, this is going to be insane. It's going to shut down Ojiro's, and the format is going to shift to, like, only zero diff foundation. It's going to be great. Next up, we have... Oh, oh, but don't do not do this real quick. Don't do this during um, Missouri Smash. If you do this during Missouri Smash, uh, it's just next check. So it doesn't say to play attacks. So, or I guess, I mean, you could block the Missouri Smash with uh, with Vile Seizing, right? Next up, we have the last card I've got. This one is definitely the best that I saved for last. Runaway. This card is going to be massive. This card is huge. This card is going to dunk on all those characters that like to put a bunch of damage on stuff, you know, especially the ones that really don't care about speed, like Nomu's and like the fourth kind decks and every 1.3 million deck. This card's going to be huge. So response, lose X health. Before the damage step of your rival's unblocked attack, it deals no damage. Add the top card of your rival's discard pile to their card pool. X equals the attack's printed damage. So... OG Rows are definitely going to have trouble comboing off their Texas punches. And if it's not um, one of the other zones uh, that they didn't play yet, that's the top of their discard pile. So, like, if they check good, which, you know, these OG Row decks are definitely checking good. And, and you know, they're, 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 when, they're, when they're discarding for snack time and one with nature, it's always a foundation, right? So then you're going to run away. You're going to knock take 8, 9, 10 damage, then you're going to stuff their card pool, and then they're going to have to stop attacking you, and there's going to be nothing they can do. You're just going to take 4, you're going to have this card in your card pool, they're going to have an extra card in their card pool. I mean, you can't block with it, right? So you have to respond with it. Um, but once you clog their pool, 
There's definitely no way they're going to kill you. I mean, you combine this with the sticky balls, man. Ugh, you just bought yourself probably two turns. So, Runaway is going to be absolutely massive. Once um, once they sideboard in um, Forcing Surrender, um, we, we might side these out. This might not be... I mean, it adds one to the difficulty of the next, the next attack. So, um, main board, Runaway, and you'll win game one. Once uh once forcing surrender is there, we can we can commit it with showdown and then we run away the next one on a six. And um that will definitely keep us alive. And you can do that on two two symbols. So runaway, absolutely gonna dunk on Ojiro's. It's gonna stop all those Texas Smash combo decks. Uh it's gonna ruin funny punch, focused attack decks. This is gonna be a meta staple for sure for sure uh you're gonna see tons of chaos decks want to pick this up because they finally get access to like some nasty card pool stuffing action so yeah runaway this is also going to be a card that you really want to run like four of because you can definitely take four damage four times right so in this meta where we can't block with one with nature we'll just take the damage and they don't get a momentum because it's not real damage we're going to lose the health for cost. And then they don't get momentum for later. They don't get to combo on us. And then if they want to build out, that's plus one to the difficulty of their foundations, which, oh my God, is going to make them fail checks, you guys. And we have, what, two symbols? So if you're playing evil in order, you definitely, definitely want to get four masterminding. And you're want to you're going to want to get four runaway. Jim all those cards in your main deck and then we're probably going to side out the runaways for game two and then they'll have useless forcing surrenders see what i'm saying guys you're going to be like five steps ahead of them and you're going to win every single game guaranteed so just wait for class reunion to come out get i mean you probably don't need four of the seven if you just need to see it once right you just draw one copy of this card you win on the spot but uh, and in the futures now, you can only play one per turn. So, I mean, you're going to get like four of these with, because you're going to need um, four masterminding, which is going to be like a minimum for class reunion products. But then you're going to get the futures now with all of them. So like this one, you probably don't need four, but you'll definitely have four of this one. Um, and then, yeah, and then create insulation. That's an easy four of for stun hate, like super, super easy four of. So yeah, definitely go out, get your class reunion boxes. Make sure you use the code plug in at unfunstuff.com to save on your orders, guys. And I can't wait to hear all your success stories against Ojiro 2 in the upcoming format. No ban list necessary.